Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yeah. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. I'm Nathan Simmons, and I can suck the Thames dry. <laughs> Well, Nathan took mine, so... <laughs> I fucking knew it. That's why I wanted to go first. God damn it. And uh, I'll bring every last one of you cunts down. You and your fucking brothers. <laughs> and this is the Silver Linings Playlist. A poor cast of trying to find a Silver Linings, Thomas Shepard, Blake, and Sandings. No, we're not, we're not doing this. Oh, yes, if we are. Yes, we are. It's the Silver Linings <laughs> in it. <laughs> we sure are. We from L. <laughs> I did consider just doing like the same intro from Men, where I just was <laughs> doing my Rory Kinnear. <laughs> Man, this movie would have been a bit of for some Rory Kinnear. I'll be honest with you. Yeah, uh, Mally's already logged off. <laughs> yep, <I'm- laughs> You, you healed from that explosive diarrhea you had from last episode. <laughs> yeah, uh, escaped from prison. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. I'm fucking, I'm back, man. Yeah. Yeah, we were talking about how you, we thought you died from diarrhea last week. I'm so upset that Nathan took my intro. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yeah, you got quiet like the devil's laugh. <laughs> Fuck, stop. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Will you like a tour to syphilis ward? <laughs> you, you sound like a Kennedy. I can't yeah, do what it. Are you doing? I can't fucking do it. I'm a Kennedy that visited Britain once, and I'm like, I, this is my new uh, thing. <laughs> I'm going full Lindsay Lohan with it. <laughs> You're like that person that studied abroad exactly. for one semester. Uh, exactly. And won't shut the fuck up about it. Yeah, you're right. I, I'm civilized now. We're going to the moon because it's hard in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome everyone to hell. No, uh, hell to the yeah. Silver Linings playlist. If this is your first time tuning in, that's just a bunch of chaos that just happened, wasn't it? Apologies to our UK listeners. <laughs> <laughs> we are a show um, that likes to watch movies such as the one we're watching today, From Hell, yeah, from 2001, which also was Hell, if you can believe it. Yeah. And we try to find Synergy. the good in those bleak endings, much like we're talking about today. Name one thing bad that happened that year besides this movie. I was going to say Shrek came out, but <laughs> that was a good thing. Mm, that was good. <laughs> it was real good. Glitter came out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's all I can think of. Yeah. Glitter the product? The, uh, <laughs> the, the, Mariah, uh, the Mariah Carey biopic. Mm-hmm. What? And uh, I think Master of Disguise also was a 2001 movie. The it Dana was. The Carvey movie. If I, it was. I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so nothing bad happened in 2001. Yeah. <laughs> nothing bad happened that year. There was that moment when, uh, you know, you saw someone come in and say, uh, sir, a second Dana Carvey film has been released. <laughs> Wait, isn't 2001 when they officially announced The Flash? I think you you're might right. Be right. Okay. I think you're right. They went into production, yeah. That's right. But 2010 was the year we make contact. Mm-hmm. And then 2001, uh, an- another thing that bad happened, Robbie Coltrane and said, sir, a second prostitute has been found dead in the streets. <laughs> Y'all, I got so many, li- so many notes about Robbie Coltrane in this fucking mm-hmm. movie. Are they they all about how fucking good he is yeah Yeah. mostly mostly someone told him he was doing a shakespeare movie and then he was like oh man oh man no he decided he was Mm -hmm. ian holm they said halfway through the production you're in a shakespeare movie in the second half they're like you remember when bilbo goes fucking crazy in that one (laughs) scene that's that's what you're doing for the rest of the movie (laughs) that "Ah," sound you make can you just say your lines like that yeah yeah so, yeah, from hell, from 2001, from the Hughes brothers, mm-hmm. you know, the legendary directing duo that is Albert and Alan Hughes. The gentleman who opened the Book of Eli. Mm-hmm. Hey, they did menace to society. They True. did, and then their presidents died. <laughs> there were dead presidents all around them, and that's pretty much it. They did uh, The Good Lord Bird. That's true, the Ethan Hawke movie. Yeah. Oh, I haven't seen that. Miniseries. Oh, miniseries, you're right. I didn't see it. Yeah. I didn't see it. It was good. Okay. All right. I don't know. I just these these guys just just kind of came and went, right? I mean, like they, I don't know. Well, they split up and they've both done movies separately since then, right? So, so is that a thing now? Like the Coen brothers split, yeah. Wachowski split, Safdie split. Like we're just breaking up siblings left and right. Huh? Yeah. yeah, me and Nathan are about to start a new podcast. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> yeah, fuck. All right, the Continental from the world of Silver Linings playlist. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, everything needs a spinoff. It's just us talking about Matt Barry. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I, I like that. I'll be a listener. Mally. What? From hell, your pick. Yeah. Why? 
<laughs> why this movie? You know why. Okay. Is it because there's a bunch of dead hookers everywhere? I don't know. I don't Secret know. Secret society. Oh, that's right. Cult. Culty stuff going on. Of course. I should have should have put two and two together. Oh, no. I just randomly watched it and I was like, I don't know. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Now, I also believe that as well for the movies you picked for the show. You kept pestering me about filling the spots. Mm-hmm. So. I sure did. Got that pesky hosting duties I have to do. Well, the, the movie opens with what I assume is just Mally at rest hanging out in a hookah lounge. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I, I just, uh, I don't know. Representation's important. Y'all remember when opium was just like all the rage? Oh, yeah. This, the Nick. God. <laughs> good times. I gotta say, I, I had heard of this movie and I never, I, I was w- aware of it, but I went into this movie knowing nothing about Jack the Ripper other oh. than they never figured out who did it. Mm. So to find out that everyone in this movie is playing real people was <laughs> mind boggling to me. Sure. I got to tell you guys, and I know, I know I'm inviting myself to, uh, oh boy. <laughs> to some bullying here. Here we go. I went through a big Jack the Ripper phase in high school. That makes sense. I, I, I believe that. Oh, sir. Uh, were you, were, as, were you Mally? I know. No, I wouldn't consider myself a Ripperologist. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought you were going to call yourself of a ripper file. <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, hey, uh, would you prefer a ripist? No, no, no I would not. <laughs> nope, <laughs> nope. No, I went through a I went through a big ripper phase as well, mm. dude. It it was around the time that Patricia Cornwell put out that book where she was like, I figured it out, and then I was like, Well, I don't think she did. <laughs> and a bunch of other people said, I don't think she did. But I got like, kind of went on a yeah, like a, a down a rabbit hole reading about Jack the Ripper. I also went through a Titanic phase. I was a big history nerd as a kid yeah well, well everybody went through a titanic phase in the late 90s I sure think. i think that's safe to say that's fair did you ever read jack the ripper the final solution Possibly. Oh, i don't like that title i don't yeah. i don't like that title it's a bad bad <laughs> choice of title yeah bad choice of title they really should have rethought that one yeah because it came out well <laughs> after oh yeah that <laughs> I, I just did not know that like johnny depp was and like his character is a, a real character that existed uh-huh. well, and when he's first introduced i'm like oh no this is what we're doing a psychic detective this well, is the movie i'm in for and truly even more fuel to the fire of alan moore not wanting anyone to ever adapt his comic books ever again <laughs> because this is very exceedingly loosely based on alan moore and eddie campbell's graphic novel that is like the ripper is the main character of the book mm, and yeah like, like it's told movie, from his point of view yeah oh. the movie basically basically adapts it in reverse. Aberlene is like barely a character mm. in the novel. Like it's it's kind of wild. And he's, he's not, not psychic. psychic. Oh, there is God. a there is a psychic in the graphic novel, but he straight up says is like, "Oh no, I'm making all this shit up for profit." Jesus yeah. Christ. And then the the Ripper has like these visions every time he kills somebody, yeah. but like it's very much played like, "Oh, this could just be visions of the future." Yeah, <laughs> but it's also played like this could just be, you know, his mania. Yeah. And up and until like the end of the book but yeah th- this is it's so weird that someone read this and was like i'm gonna do the dead zone yeah. mixed with uh fucking sleepy hollow dude okay all that being said the whole the royal family is behind it is my favorite fucking jack the ripper theory it's a great theory it's a really fun theory i gotta say i assumed watching this movie that you knew a great deal about jack the ripper stuff mally and why I, you <laughs> Come, you know why. Look at you. <laughs> Look uh, you at just you. <laughs> just because three different people got me knives for Christmas. I'm, I'm going to quote past the future guest JC Kelly on here and say, just look at him. Like, yeah. like, like just look at you. That's profiling. <laughs> just because I look like Gary Oldman and Dracula. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I mean that as a compliment. This is like during the Fast X episode when DC told me I could pull off Jason Momoa's hairstyle. Yeah. Like, I'm just getting up. I'm, I'm out here just catching compliments left and right. Yeah. That's coming from the guy who looks like Nick Cage and Mandy. So <laughs> I really got to I got to come do this show more often. Yeah, you should show up. <laughs> to your own show more often i agree <laughs> but uh i assume like you said like all the illegitimate child and the freemason stuff is just wildly like thrown in here just to have like some stakes some of it some of it is based in in theories and and detective work and then some of it is yeah some of it is made up whole cloth okay. it's like a good mix of fiction and then several different theories that have popped up over the years i i you know what's funny though and i i feel like this is what you're leading towards i kept thinking while watching this movie would i be able to follow this at all if i was not familiar with these theories as they exist hey i got news for you i i could not <laughs> i was not familiar <laughs> absolutely so, not not a fucking chance there was a couple of times throughout this the, my notes watching this movie i was like what the fuck is going on sure <laughs> 
when they reveal that guy that's just like he looks like the the villain from Gerald's game, I was like, what are we doing in this movie? I'm so lost. <laughs> are you talking the about ele- the elephant man? man? Yeah, a real person. Yeah, I was like, what are we do? I, I don't. What are we doing? It is weird that the elephant man gets like an MCU style cameo, cameo yeah. in this movie. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it's like the JFK nod from Oppenheimer. I was like, really? It's like Adolf Hitler showing up at the end of the King's Man. <laughs> now that I like, that was a great little post credit scene. I love that. But uh, no, I was very confused. Oh, man. No, you know what's so funny about this movie is that it tries to structure itself like a mystery and then doesn't actually build a mystery. So, like, the way I described this, I was talking to Ashley about it, and I said, I think it's less of a who done it, and it's more of like I think he done it. Yeah, God damn it! And then a couple scenes later, actually, I think someone else done it. Yeah, and then uh oh, oi noi, I'm dead. <laughs> well, it's also funny to imagine that like spoiler alert, turns out Ian Holm is Jack the Ripper, sure. but like Ian Holm's five foot five, and like <laughs> just to, to think that yeah, we stand a short king, <laughs> <laughs> just to think that he's out here. And my favorite part is when they do the reveal, <laughs> and then like he's in the carriage, and they blacked out his eyes. He doesn't have the eye light. When he turns around and his <laughs> eyes are fully black, I laughed out loud. I, I I could I cackled on the couch. Here's the thing: I know I saw this when it came out because this was on Showtime all the fucking time. Oh, I, this feels like a Showtime or a Stars. Yep. Like it's on repeat all the time. Doesn't the first half of this feel like the pilot episode for the Inspector Abilene TV series? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I yeah absolutely now I I don't know there's parts of this movie I like but most of it I just like this is just another one of these like mediocre aughts thrillers sure. that like we were obsessed with like old foggy London town like we got like Van Helsing and <laughs> shit like that around this time and I'm just like I don't know I didn't get it we're obsessed with the city aesthetic but God forbid anyone looks like they haven't bathed in, like three times today everyone's got perfect pearly white teeth and the makeup's done but we put a little dirt under their cheeks like on their cheekbones not, not on Heather Graham no, Heather Graham is true. spotless in this movie that's, yeah that's true her makeup is flawless throughout this movie but yeah why don't we uh, talk a little bit more about who this film stars and the budget and all that good stuff what do you say fine all right fine <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it if you insist So, as I mentioned, the year is 2001, uh, a year where nothing bad ever happened. Mm -mm. And uh, the directors are Albert and Alan Hughes. Mm -hmm. The movie stars Ian Holm, Caitlin Cartledge, Heather Graham, Robbie Coltrane, and Johnny Depp. And that is the order that Roger Ebert lists them in. (laughs) Interesting. That's kind of hilarious. Kind of wild. Roger Ebert, who I think liked this movie a lot, didn't he? Uh, I don't know, actually. That's a good question. I'm going to look up his review. I think he gave this like three out of four stars. What the f- (laughs) That didn't come up in your fucking pulling from his review? I don't even bother sometimes looking at what he gave the movies because he ebert is such an enigma on yeah. what he gave great ratings versus what he didn't so it's especially uh, when it comes to horror mm-hmm. like any genre pictures he was so unpredictable i mean the dude loved stuart little so <laughs> like i don't know what to tell you fair enough the budget for this movie was 35 million dollars and it managed to gross 74 million dollars worldwide huh. and currently <laughs> huh. yeah it, it, was, it was a hit fellas and it is currently rated uh, on Rotten Tomatoes with a 57%. And it earns it. Fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. It earns it. Three stars, by the way, out of four <laughs> for Roger Ebert. Favorable <laughs> review. I, I, don't, I don't really have much else to say about that. I, again, he's just, he he had weird choices. He just seen that. All right, and Excelsior. <laughs> have a good night. See you next time. Oh, the, the, the Home Alone 3 clip. The Home Alone 3, where he's like, this is my favorite out of all of them. Yeah. What? Like, what? This is the one where they finally got it right. Yeah, yeah. This is the one that's got all the heart. And then you just see Cisco there be like, what the, my brain is melting. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's not real, is it? It is. is. Yeah. What? It is. <laughs> I don't know. He, he Again, Eber had some wild out there fucking thoughts, man. Oh, man. All right. Before we watch the trailer, fellas, uh, I do have, and this will come to shock to, to neither of you, a drink of the film. Yeah. This was an adventure, I got to say. <laughs> Getting opium in this day and age as a consumer is, <laughs> is difficult work. No, um, no I, I, I am, am living currently in a small town in Florida, mm-hmm. and apparently absinthe is like, I, like I might as well be asking for crack cocaine because- mm. I called so many liquor stores, went to so many liquor stores, nobody had it, and then I finally found one that did, and then none of them had spoons, and I, I had to get... I, it was a whole ordeal, so... Do you not have spoons? Not like the an absinthe spoon, like gotcha. an, an actual one used for absinthe where you melt what the... What is sh- 
an absinthe spoon. Oh, I'll, I'll send you guys a picture of the setup. So there's, it's kind of a whole ordeal. And it's going to look like the drawing of the knife from later in the movie. <laughs> you see it in the movie. It's when when Johnny Depp's putting the opium on the sugar cube, mm-hmm. and then there's a spoon that it filters through to go into the drink. It's a lot. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the whole setup here. I even got... Uh, yeah, you I left got, your syringe in the photo. I got so. <laughs> matches and a torch. Ooh. I don't know if you can hear it, but... Uh, yeah, got some fire. Yeah, love an audio mixology segment. Mm-hmm, oh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Gotta love it. So I'm going to make some absinthe here the proper way. Mm-hmm. So I got the glass, oh, got the spoon, mm-hmm. got the sugar cubes, and of course the absinthe itself. And uh, I'm going to do this while we watch the trailer. And then uh, by the time we're done with the trailer. You'll be fucked up. I'll be fucking hammered. And by the way, I'm using a green fairy absinthe. Mm-hmm. Oh. So, uh. If anyone gives a shit. I don't know what that means. Oh, and uh, past guest from uh, last week's episode, uh, Priscilla is here to join me drinking some absinthe. Come on, Priscilla. What do you think? Who gives a fuck? (laughs) (laughs) I'm glad Mally stepped on the bad joke I was going to make. All right. Um... (laughs) <laughs> all right well the, the yeah the, ma- the match isn't gonna fucking work okay we don't have a match but we just have the match so all right let me get the syringe this is all good <laughs> yep yep and i know i said i was gonna do this during the trailer but fuck you i'm doing it now. all right fine <laughs> let's see and then i guess mally and i will just pretend to drink it like we're lost boys mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah what is i don't what am i supposed to be doing here hold on all my favorite never drinks all right I got the syringe. Okay. Putting the spoon on. And the candy. It's an audio podcast. I'm aware. All right. Got the uh, absinthe pudding with the syringe on the sugar cube. It's bright green. You have absinthe pudding? Absinthe pudding, yeah. <laughs> this is like I'm like cough syrup. It's what, exactly what it looks like. Oh my God. <laughs> let's get pudding. All right. I'm uh, lighting the sugar on fire. Okay. I'm not going to light the mic on fire. Calm down. <laughs> and it's melting. Great. Ooh. We have to wait for your drink to change state. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost done. The sugar is like uh, coagulating, you know, and it's like filtering. You're like, you could have at least turned a camera on so we could watch this you know, happen a, or something. That's a good point. I could have fucking done that. Actually, yeah, let me see. Let me see this. Hold on, hold on. Let me get my phone. It's got a big old thumbs up from Roger Ebert on the screen. I need to squirt some more stuff on there. You're absolutely right. Okay. I don't. Let me squirt some more. Don't turn the camera on. <laughs> yeah, if you're <laughs> squirting things, maybe just leave it off. If you're over there squirting up a storm. Priscilla's going to take the... Oh, you lit the whole thing on fire. So you're gonna set us. The spoon is on fire. <laughs> you did it wrong. What is happening over there? Go. We guys, we might burn down our house. Great. I'm just be honest with you. Ooh, it's sizzling. Here, let me let me let me get get you guys on camera so you can see. Hold on. Okay. Bear, hurry up. I'm going. I'm going. Do I need to be on camera? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, actually, you you have to be on camera. Okay, I'll just look. <laughs> Ooh, the sugar's like seeping through through the spoon. Okay. I know this is great for the audio part. Mm-hmm. I'll clean this up in post. No, it's okay. I'm on video. <laughs> oh God, I can see Nathan. I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for most for those who don't know, when we record these, we we have blindfolds on mm-hmm. and we don't look at each other at all. Horse blinders. <laughs> this is this feels unhealthy. Oh, you sent me a picture. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's green as hell. It's it's like cough syrup. Ew. Yeah. Why? Huh? Have you had absinthe before? I've had it before, and Priscilla's had it before, but okay. I've never done it the proper way, quote unquote, like this. Mm, mm-hmm. I have. You've done it like this? Yeah, I ordered it at a bar. This is how they they had like the mechanics mm. that dripped it slowly over the sugar cube. They didn't light it on fire. There's a couple of different ways, but apparently this is the proper way to do it. And this mm. is how he does it in the movie too. But instead, proper absinthe. <laughs> and so he's got opium, which uh, I'm you know hard to come by. Watching these voices actually come out of Nathan's head is weird. <laughs> I can't position the camera so you guys can see this, but uh, it's almost done. No, it's don't almost do done. That. Don't do that. This is all getting <laughs> cut out, right? Uh-huh. This is all cut. Like, none of this is making the episode. <laughs> can you actually, uh, while we watch the trailer, can you grab me a little cup of water to pour on here? Because you're supposed to put it out with water. Mm. Yeah. Priscilla, do something. <laughs> She's going. So why, why don't we watch the trailer while she gets that? Inspector, I know your reputation for making brilliant guesses that turn out to be right. Someone told me you claim to dream the answers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. What? I, by the way, I was not ready for the Marilyn Manson needle drop at the end of this movie. <laughs> the music, the font choice. Mr. the one she was down as well. She was done the cries out for a man of your talent. Can foresee the victims. Listen to that voiceover. You have visions about me. Most definitely. You know, they used to burn men like you alive. He 
could sense the suspects. He must be someone with money. And how do you know that? This ain't killing for profit. This is ritual. They put the shot but of the Inspector coins on his eyes in the trailer. Investigations. He's punishing them. I want double shifts within this area. We'll have mayhem on the streets. I believe this was done by someone with a working knowledge of dissection. Yeah, someone with a working knowledge of dissection. <laughs> I'm gonna throw this out right now. I think Johnny Depp is quite bad in this movie. Yeah, I don't. I don't think anyone's arguing with you. Cool, because this was still when everyone was kind of like, "Oh, you pick interesting things, don't you, Johnny?" <laughs> right. Would be next. Jack the Ripper's not finished. Where is he? I want him. The slowly, like, shaking titles. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's a bad trailer. Yeah. One day, men will look back and say that I gave birth to the 20th century. You're not going to see the 20th century. Oh, uh, that's the hardest line in the movie. I know. Yeah. This sounds like that music they play in the sex club in Matrix Revolutions. It's the club from uh, Blade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awful trailer. Yeah. So I'm going to send you guys this now because she was in the trailer. But Samantha Spiro, who plays Martha, one of the ladies, mm -hmm. has a very distinctive look in this film. And I realized why she looks familiar. And I just sent it. Right, I'm going to try this absinthe and then Priscilla's going to try it too. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> you good? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> you gotta try it now, too. Don't look at me like that. Try it. You why did you pour so much? Cause you, you gonna drink it all? I, I guess I'm gonna fucking do it. Don't... Why are you... Why, what is up with sniffers? People that have to sniff <laughs> things. You know it's not gonna smell great. It's not a bug. Yeah, Priscilla loves, like, smelling things. And she goes, oh, I'm not gonna like this. Well, yeah, if you just inhale it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right, here she goes. I should get a picture of her face. Oh, I don't like it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, she's leaving. Oh, you, you don't like it? This is why this shit caught on fire. It tastes like kerosene. Yeah, it, it does. <laughs> it's great. You know what we're missing? We're missing the opium. That's the missing ingredient. No, it's it's pronounced Hennessy. <laughs> <laughs> I've had some before. All right, well, bye. I love you. <laughs> Oh, that was worth the bit, right? Totally. Oh, that's, yeah, we're, that's definitely not getting completely cut out of this episode. <laughs> now that we're 24 minutes in, let's talk about the movie itself. So, I'm good, honestly. <laughs> I was kind of impressed. Only one production company made this movie, and, like, <laughs> we see one card at the beginning, and I was like, wow, hell yeah. Yeah. I'm in. It's a rare sight. Now it's a rare it sight. It took a minute for this movie to get made, too. Did you see the folks who were, like, almost cast in this? I did not, but I'm, I'm interested to hear. The original choice for uh, Aberleen was uh, Sean Connery. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> then they met with Brad Pitt and Jude Law. Okay. Yes. And then they cast Johnny Depp. They also directed from hell after turning down the Planet of the Apes remake Ooh, that really? Burton ended up making. Which is also this year, right? 2001? Yeah. Yeah. Because Burton joined that movie like six weeks before filming started also. Like that is like notably not one of his really. Genuinely, maybe one of the worst years for movies, 2001. <laughs> Honestly. I don't know. Zoolander came out. Oh, my oh God. damn. I mean, I, I don't know. And really saved cinema. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. And then this movie starts with a quote, which is almost to be expected with a movie like this, but it says... <laughs> Welcome to primetime, bitch. <laughs> One day, men will look back and say, I gave birth to the 20th century. And I was like, yeah, that's what Bob Iger said when Fox merged with Disney. <laughs> he gave birth. This is all mine now. <laughs> But I gotta say, great title. Yeah. Pretty great title. Oh, excellent title. And a good little payoff with the with the joke about it later on. The letter and yeah, everything. Yeah. yeah. At least he got the address right. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny Depp. This is, what, two years before Pirates of the Caribbean that really, like, revamps his career? Are we going to relitigate Caribbean versus Caribbean? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. <laughs> Do we need to? <laughs> yeah, this is two years before that, but also it's two years after Sleepy Hollow, which I think is the more interesting version of this character. I was going to say. I was going to say, he had already done this, basically. Yeah. And so, I heavily debate, because I watched both of these movies. I've watched Sleepy Hollow and this back-to-back -back mm. in one night. Yeah. Right, yeah. By candlelight. I debated <laughs> which one to put on the list. Mm. And Sleepy Hollow doesn't, I couldn't really think of an argument to make it fit. Right. Yeah. So, we ended up here. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, it's a fun movie, I'll say at least. If nothing else, it's at least entertaining. Yes. Sleepy Hollow, 100%. Yeah. This one, ah. Speaking of sleepy, Johnny Depp throughout this movie. Oh, my God. I, remember when he tried to act? Like, because this is not it. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird because I, I tend to think of Johnny Depp's, like, sleepwalking years as being after this. Right. You know, the, the tourist and shit like that. But yeah. this is, like, a dire performance. Mordecai. Mordecai. <laughs> <laughs> yoga hosers mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i mean he's good in tusk I, I like him in tusk for that little bit part he does i think he is the worst part of tusk oh come on <laughs> that's the best part. i mean well i guess uh, i guess um parks is is the reason for the season for that movie absolutely but, uh, no i i like johnny depp's little <laughs> canadian detective in that movie i thought it was great <laughs> you know so anytime i watch a period piece mm. all i can think of is thank god i was born at the time i was born i would <laughs> Uh, you know how we talked about we wouldn't last in Grave of the Fireflies but a few minutes? <laughs> right. That's me in this movie. Everything just feels, smells, and looks grimy as hell. I don't want to touch anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, I truly, every time I see a period piece, I all I can think about, even if it's like, you know, a, a really fancy, you know, fancy dress, you know, uh, ball gowns kind of movie, even those, I'm like, everyone here smells. Oh, every Bridgerton, everyone smells like shit. <laughs> they all stank it. Yeah, everyone, there was somebody on Twitter was like, imagine like back in the day would like you would try to court a woman for months uh-huh. and then you finally get get her to bed and it's the worst thing ever yeah, it's ever happened you both smell like you haven't bathed in months yeah like, it's, it's just, just everything <laughs> smells like balls like I've, I've, been, I've been re-watching doctor who and the fact that there's never a moment where david Tennant is like can you fucking take a bath like, i just want that to happen <laughs> nah it's just everything looks like it's got like a grime to it like a like a sheen of slime yeah. just on it like i don't know man I, ugh. yeah like i like have you guys ever like have you guys ever been to cincinnati ohio <laughs> no but i've been to oh, cleveland with this again. that's worse yeah yeah well cleveland rocks <laughs> nice i don't know if you're aware of this but <laughs> I, I kept thinking that like everything here looks disgusting and then all of our leads are so pretty mm-hmm. and so like so well kept johnny depp has a I, I mean i don't know everyone's hair has been shampooed mm-hmm no, I just, I think the production design of this movie is genuinely pretty great. The art direction in general, like they Love got- the red sky stuff. Yeah. I, that, there are shots in this movie that look like they're straight out of the graphic novel, which mm-hmm. I really loved. No, they got, they got the aesthetic feel. Like, I feel how gross this place is. And I also feel that, like, prostitution would be, like, one of the only forms of, like, legitimate ways of making a living. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what this, if you're not familiar with the movie and the concept, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you. So, so there's this guy, Jack. Yeah, and he looks <laughs> rip things can you believe it <laughs> but no heather graham is a prostitute uh, and lady of the night there you go lady of the night or as the movie loves to call them whores. Oh, yes. <laughs> there's so many wild turns of phrase for them in this movie uh-huh. jezebel mm-hmm. god jezebel's a good one what's the one robbie coltrane keeps saying bang tail and <laughs> like i, I miss I miss that entirely <laughs> blew my mind he says it like 18 times so there are a group of ladies that each begin getting killed off one by one mm-hmm. by this unknown entity known as Jack the Ripper and Johnny Depp. Uh, what is his official position? He's an inspector. Okay. And he uh, solves crimes by getting real high. And really fucking visions. high. Uh, <laughs> the way we get introduced to Johnny Depp is him getting blitzed out of his fucking gourd. He is chasing the dragon, <laughs> man. Just- chasing that dragon. <laughs> and imagining an Aphex twin video. <laughs> yeah, he does. He does. He does look like he's an Apex twin video. Like, it's just... There's a couple of different times we have to see him pouring opium over sugar into absinthe and just getting fucking blitzed. And again, it should be noted that, like, Mary Kelly and all of the, the women that are preyed upon by Jack the Ripper are based on the, the real Ripper's victims. Yeah. All of these characters are, if not exactly based on real people, they share their names. Yes. And- oh, I just got your picture, too, by the way. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. Pretty great. No, but like the whole idea here is Johnny Depp can quote unquote see visions of these murders. Yeah. And uh, he's always too late. Yeah. Sometimes he has to be high and other times he can like Christopher Walken style, you know, the ice is going to break. Yes. Like he just touches a wall and hears a voice that tells him here's the next part of the plot. The, the dead zone is a very apt comparison to this. Yeah. It's just like put put Christopher Walken in foggy old London town and there you go. Look, I'm not saying Christopher Walken 
shouldn't have played <laughs> Inspector Aberlin. Uh, I would like him as Ian Holmes' character, honestly. That would have been great. Uh, her petticoats spattered with blood. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. No, so that's that's the basic premise. Is we got to find out who Jack the Ripper is, and uh, we got to figure out before Heather Graham and the rest of these ladies get killed off. And Meanwhile, all of high society seems to be pushing him to not solve the case. Yes. Yeah, man. The twist... <laughs> Do we want to go ahead and spoil it now? Sure. I guess we should, right? I mean, the sooner we spoil it, the sooner we can get the fuck out of here. <laughs> I think it's hilariously obvious from the beginning of the movie. <laughs> so one of these ladies uh, that's friends with Heather Graham had a baby with a very rich man, as they call him, named Albert. Mm -hmm. And so she's like, I'm, I'm leaving, ladies. I'm going to go get I'm, I'm getting married. We're going to go live, you know, in high society. I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. I, I got I got a, a anchor baby. Basically, we're getting out. Jesus. And uh, she is kidnapped kidnapped and lobotomized yeah. that's the start of like these women disappearing off the streets and albert is taken away as well and the twist is he is prince albert <laughs> and he is heir to the throne <laughs> of england in the book he gives them like a fake name when he starts seeing polly mm -hmm. and in this movie it's almost like that's it's like that scene in the family guy star wars special where he's like obi-wan kenobi i wonder if he means old obi-wan kenobi yeah lives yeah. in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, the idea is, oh, uh, they had a baby together. Mm -hmm. Well, that baby is a threat to the royal family, the heir to the throne. The succession. Yeah. Yeah. Because Prince Albert is going to be dying soon because he's got syphilis. Yeah. He's got the old siffy brain. The, <laughs> the old Al Capone disease. Exactly. They can't have that happen. So they got to get rid of the mom, get rid of the baby, and get rid of anyone that is witness to the fact that they were a couple and had a baby. So that's why these ladies of the night are getting taken out. And Jack the Ripper is their henchman, basically. Basically. The way you were describing this makes it sound really interesting. Thank you. <laughs> the way that this is all revealed is the most pedestrian way possible. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of characters expositing. It's Johnny Depp doesn't do any detecting. Yeah. And he doesn't do any inspecting in this movie. It's a whole lot of either someone telling him the plot mm -hmm. or him having a vision that like he figures out who Jack the Ripper is because he just like smokes some opium and then Jack the Ripper walks into camera frame and essentially it's just like it's me i'm like, gonna go out on uh on a limb here and say oh, this Jesus. movie is kind of how if you take indiana jones out of raiders of the lost ark everything is still fine at the end <laughs> i think almost the same thing with this movie because johnny depp doesn't really solve the case and no. even when he quote unquote does the illuminati the freemasons they just take out jack the ripper anyway like uh -huh. You're good. It is like one of the lesser X-Files episodes where mm -hmm. Mulder and Scully just kind of tell us what the monster of the week is, and yeah. then we watch it kill a bunch of people. Well, and that's the weakest, one of the weakest parts of the movie to me is like, okay, we figured out who Jack the Ripper is. It's Ian Holm. We got him. All right. Well. Scoop his brain out. Yeah. And they just lobotomized <laughs> him too. And all's good. Yeah. Everything is great. The case is solved. Like, Johnny Depp doesn't do anything. Ah! I guess the only thing he really does is he saves Heather Graham. She leaves. She saves herself. You're right. You're right. That's fair. She she kind of puts a French prostitute in her place and lets that woman get butchered. <laughs> Just gets the fuck out of there. Yeah. The only thing he does is when they're like, is this Mary's body? And he's like, nar. Yeah, like, he does. He really does. <laughs> Sometimes he's Cockney in this movie, mm -hmm. and other times he's posh. And it was really funny, like how some he would just kind of go back and forth. Yeah. Like I don't know. Sometimes he's very proper, and then other times he's like, "What do you think, <laughs> like, bro? Pick so an accent." Weird. Not for nothing. That's how I do English accents. I can't stick to one. I gotta go. <laughs> I, I I rotate between it. And sometimes, like you said, I'm a Kennedy, so <laughs> I get it. So one of these two guys here at the beginning that kind of like uh, run up on Heather Graham. I don't know if you guys notice it, but one of them is Ralph Innocent. Who you may remember as the dad from The Witch. Oh, yes. Yeah. Which is crazy because his voice isn't nearly as deep right. as I'm used to hearing it. Because I'm used to that dude sounding like a, a box of rocks talking. That, but, uh, <laughs> that was one of the things I really enjoyed about this movie was every three seconds, there's another tremendous British character actor mm -hmm. just playing a small part. Jason Fleming mm -hmm. uh, as the as the ca the carriage driver. Yeah. I, I love that guy. Dude, I wrote that because I watched this on, on uh, Amazon. Amazon. I was like, you know what? Jeff Bezos has done one good thing because the x-ray feature on Amazon is a godsend because <laughs> when this coroner shows up, I'm yes. like, I know who this fucking coroner is, but I can't put my finger on it. I hit pause and it pops up and tells you who's in the scene. It's fucking Fulton Greenwall from Ace Ventura Pet Detective. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, hell yeah. 
<laughs> this is a great feature. Yeah. Also, dude, he like that corner is so upset uh-huh. about the fact that he just has to do his job. I know. I'm like, he's and so honestly, <laughs> I fucking you relate 10 out of 10 can relate. <laughs> but I'm like, if you have a weak stomach, this is the worst job you could be taking right the now. The worst. All of the corners, they can't handle it. Absolutely. I mean, they're, they're, the premise is like, oh, Jack the Ripper is mutilating these these bodies so badly that mm-hmm. a coroner can't fucking deal with it. And at one point, he says, uh, he removed her livelihood. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> ha- what? <laughs> Ashley goes, pardon me? What? Like, I need to, I need the <laughs> diagram. How is that possible? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But uh, yeah, the no, worst coroners maybe at a movie. Like, you guys aren't doing your jobs. I mean, maybe next to uh, What's-His-Face from Gone in 60 Seconds, who's just <laughs> leaving ham sandwiches out on the bodies. Right. Gone in 60 Seconds maybe the movie that's referenced the most on this show. Probably. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> uh, because it's fucking fantastic. It is, it is fantastic. <laughs> it's been Mally's cool down like four times. Did you say my cool down? <laughs> yeah. Is that what we're calling it now? Yeah, yeah. We're trying to tell the new 2024. They're not pick me up somewhere. They're cool down. I like it. <laughs> the stuff that really sticks with me is, you know, when they're wheeling Polly in and she's like wide eyed and strapped to a table and yep. they're like not even showing her as the, you know, he's tapping the hammer into her head. And oh my God, the lobotomy stuff. Blech. Being very clinical about it. Yeah. And she's lobotomized in front of an audience. Yeah. That's how I want to go out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. You know, I'm watching this movie and I, I, Heather Graham is one of the leads and I'm like, you know, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever seen Heather Graham take on like a serious role besides this. Like, the closest I could think of was maybe Boogie Nights, yeah. but that's not even really a serious role there either, you know? Heather Graham is super hit or miss for me. Yeah. Like, a lot of the time I feel like she's, I, I don't know, there's something about her that just doesn't feel authentic to yeah. me. I, th- there's, there, but she, when she works, she's great. Like, I, like you said, she's, she's great in Boogie Nights. She's mm-hmm. great in, uh, her one scene in Twin Peaks fire walk with me. Like yeah. I, there, there are moments where she, she really comes through for me. Maybe just miscast. Honestly. Yeah. I think maybe that's part of it. Yeah. You mentioned Jude Law as Johnny Depp. I think that would have been an okay choice. Yeah, totally. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe there's, there's just some roles in this movie that are just miscast for some reason. Like, it was 2004, I think, where Jude Law was in every fucking movie. Like, yeah. I Heart Huckabees, uh, Alfie, and Sky Captain all came out at the same fucking time. Yeah. And we were like, who who asked for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when they when they try the old Jai Courtney trick, like, let's just put him in stuff, you know? Yeah, he's handsome enough, right? But I do like Jude Law. I, yeah, I like Jude Law. Yeah, yeah. I do like the visuals for when they show the Jack the Ripper killings. Like mm-hmm. it's very um like heightened, like the like the ISO of the cameras turned up mm-hmm. and everything's crackly. Very giallo with yeah. like the knife lit in the pitch blackness as it's stabbing. It's very, it's very cool. It has a couple of like Michael Myers esque moments too, mm-hmm. where he like grabs someone out of the shadows and yeah, the, that stuff all works really well. But they do that, and then the rest of the movie looks pretty boring. Yeah, honestly, yeah. Like, there's a lot of just kind of point and shoot in this one, right? Yeah. A little bit. And then yeah, we get old Haggard himself, Robbie Coltrane. Uh, <laughs> so steps in is, good. Yeah. What is his job? He's just kind of like to wrangle Johnny Depp, basically. Basically, yeah, he's, the, yeah. he's the Johnny Wrangler. The he's Johnny the, Wrangler. He's the Rango Wrangler. <laughs> he's the Rango. That was actually his job on set, and they were just like, I don't know, film it. Robbie yeah. Coltrane was the PA. Yeah. He's just like just got to wrangle him. He's like, okay, I'll keep Johnny on set, but I, but I'll get to do a little bit of Shakespeare, right? Yeah. He, <laughs> he, he was he was running first team on this. <laughs> And I've got to say RIP to the big man, too. Oh, man. Sad, sad to say. So great. Yeah. And man, I got to say, I don't think any one of us would pick him, but I got to strike a potential for the bit part. Oh, no. Because Is it the guy who vomits and passes out immediately? No, 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 no. Okay. It's, the, it's the guy that hires one of the prostitutes in the back alley. And in oh, yeah. Maybe the... F- oh. You, you <laughs> just put it between your legs. Yeah, she's like, cause he goes, is it in? She goes, of course it's in. He goes, no, it's not. It's between your legs. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> God, this is the worst time to be alive. This is awful. And then he like grips the fence and it's just like a hammer. I, I, this is the worst. This shit is grim. Yeah, I, I didn't. I did not consider picking that guy. Well, thank you. I just had to take it off just in case. That's who Dustin's going to pick. He's taking it from us so he can pick it. I was. I was so happy. I was watching this movie alone when that scene happened. Ugh. So right after this, when when Polly is killed, we get a time lapse scene of everybody arriving on the uh, on the scene. Mm-hmm. and seeing the body and I swear to God if you put yakety sacks over this it would be the funniest <laughs> thing well the way they find her body is maybe one of the funniest things because there's this she's dead on the sidewalk yeah and this police officer turns the, a corner sees her there 
and it's so blase about finding a dead woman on the <laughs> side of the road. He's like, hey, hey, I got one. What's this then? <laughs> right here. <laughs> one thing I will give the filmmakers props for is there are shots of the bodies mm-hmm. in, in this movie that look exactly like the surviving crime scene photos True. from the original Ripper murders, which True. is like, it was kind of shocking to see how close it was. I, I guess the big problem with this movie is the Johnny Depp's storyline like mm-hmm. everything else is great the jack the ripper stuff and the killings and even the the royal family Ill- illegitimate baby stuff is interesting it's almost like they should have adapted the graphic novel maybe <laughs> maybe that would have been a good template that would have been a good choice interesting choice your storyboarding's already done hmm. hmm. but uh yeah they didn't do that for some reason uh they decided you know what this movie needs a lot of grapes a lot of grapes and a lot of slurs at the jews oh my is god what this movie decided to do instead well that's that's technically <laughs> Technically true. That's, that's all I'm historically sure. Historically accurate. Accurate. I am sure. I am sure. Because this guy's like, uh, no one in Whitechapel could afford grapes except maybe a Jew butcher. I'm like, what? Yeah, the, no, <laughs> like the, the police captain, played by Ian Richardson, another tremendous character actor, who just goes like, well, one thing's for certain, an Englishman didn't do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you're right. Like this, Johnny Depp arrives on the scene. He tells the coroner that the killer took out at least one organ. The next scene, they list all the organs that were stolen. And then a scene after that, he tells the police captain he took out at least one organ. And I'm like, yeah, I fucking get it. Yeah. Like, you don't have to tell me the same thing in every scene. I mean, it's not a bad lead to go on as maybe someone's a butcher. Mm-hmm. But like, yeah, the grapes thing, they consider grapes to be like a very luxurious a delicacy because yeah. it's so expensive, I guess, because of wine making and things like that. Again, historically accurate. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. It's just it's just funny to see grapes is like, oh, who can afford grapes? Can you, DC? <laughs> <laughs> Not, Not anymore. Economy. I don't know price grapes lately. No, I cannot. <laughs> I just, I think there's also a, it's interesting to couch this in the anti-Semitism that was going on in England at the time. That is a, a really interesting idea. At the time. I was going to well, say, yeah, it still, still happened. <laughs> but like the way that the, the, the police literally just sort of like threw it onto the Jewish community. Yeah. yeah. And we see like the, the these, you know, a, an angry mob trying to go after the, the Jewish people downtown. Yeah. And then the scene just kind of ends yeah. and we never really come back to it other than a couple of lines where they're like, you know, you're going to get the Jewish people in trouble. Like, yeah. it's it's so it's so weird. Like, it's sort of a half subplot. Well, it is weird, too, because like the police captain, his first immediate thought is uh, maybe it was Native Americans that came all the way over here. Oh, yeah. Wild Bill Hickok. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, or maybe the Jewish people did it. And then like later on, there is graffiti. There's someone's like the Jews and it's misspelled. Yeah. And he's like, you're going to get the Jews in trouble. Yeah. He's like erase this so no one sees him it's like so he's it's not like necessarily anti-semitic but right. he is quick to just be like eh, maybe they did it. i don't know but there's just a lot of stuff that kind of happens and then gets swept under the rug immediately yep. like there is a full-on episode of coffin flop at holly's <laughs> funeral <laughs> sure and no one reacts <laughs> just dead bodies busting out of shit wood <laughs> like, like, i don't know what to tell you bud we're just filming funerals airing the ones where the bodies fly out <laughs> Jack the Ripper didn't rig shit. You know what, Mally? I know you don't care for I think you should leave, but you probably would love the coffin flop really, sketch. I, I think, think that would be really right would. up your alley. I think you really would. Okay. Then there's, a, I don't remember who it was that's eating it, but there's someone that's eating a steak mm-hmm. at one point, and it was hard to tell it was a steak because I like my steak rare, but this shit looked like someone took red jello and just lightly simmered it. Jesus. It in fact is Jack the Ripper, and I think that he's eating the organs. That's right. That's, that oh, is out. it like the kidney or something, maybe? Because yeah. they mentioned, yeah, okay. But it looks like prime rib. It and does. Honestly, I thought it looked delicious. Well, I, don't, I don't know. I, I, I like my shit rare, but that was like bright red. Uh-huh. And I was like, Jesus. All right. I like my shit rare. <laughs> The one crux of this movie, too, is mm. the way that they get these ladies of the night on their own, sure. which is uh, not hard at all. They just wander around. And yeah. then he's like, by the way, I got grapes. Not even, not, not even that sometimes. There's like like the first, not the first one they kill because they lobotomize her. But yeah. the one that we just talked about where they just find her dead in the street. Yeah, Polly. He's just doing that shit broad daylight yeah. out in the open. I mean, that was kind of the thing that was terrifying about Jack the Ripper was that he went after people that society, quote unquote, like didn't care about. Right. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Like they, you know, they they would call the police about a murder and they'd be like, but it's fine. They're not like real people. They yeah. weren't even supposed to be in the area. But I'm just like, if this happened, I mean, even if Jack the Ripper was not a character in this movie, the opening 
opening scene sets you up for like what this world is like. Sure. I wouldn't trust anyone at any time. We no. travel in groups, ladies. There's power in numbers. Yeah. And that's how they all die is they all just get split up all the time <laughs> for no reason. Well, and that's a weird consequence of the screenplay because in, in real life, there's no uh, evidence that these ladies were like actually friends or yeah. close with one another. Yeah. That's sort of a, a, an invention of the book and then the screenplay. Yeah. The, the, the merry little band of, of ladies of the night. Yeah. yeah. And then, yeah, this is where my first what the fuck is going on in this movie <laughs> happens because the elephant man gets introduced to us. Like you said, like a cameo. Only your first, huh? Yeah, oh, absolutely. One of many. And then I love the woman who just said she should have been killed at birth. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's <laughs> nuts because it, I do love the idea that like they're couching this as something noble. Like, mm-hmm. look, what, look at how this is someone we're going to help this poor unfortunate. But it's they basically just classed up a sideshow. Yeah. yeah, that's how they're treating him. Yeah, we even immediately cut to Dr. Farrell, who's like. Like, talking about literally saying his own hands are a gift from God. Yeah. But yeah, you're right. Like they unmask Joseph Merrick and this. Yeah. People are screaming like, oh, my God, can you fucking believe this? <laughs> and Ugo, could you imagine? Can you imagine? And then, boy, I lit my eyes lit up when Ian Holm gets introduced here. I, I was I, I did not know he was in this movie. Yeah. And he's looking dapper as hell, but also like a ventriloquist dummy. Jesus. <laughs> it, fucking, it, it was working for me, man. I loved yeah. his little pompous hair. Like yeah. it was fucking great i loved it it looks like the conductor from phantom of the opera <laughs> absolutely this scene i laughed so fucking hard when johnny depp is like here's the knife that the killer used and draws like the most generic shitty knife drawing oh he draws a butter knife he does. Yeah. He does. it's just straight up a butter knife what if he drew the s like he just put like three lines and three more lines and just started connecting them like he's like this is what it looked like well what's so funny though is like and then ian holmes response is like well, that's very interesting well the the killer would have had to do exactly these three things. Hey, maybe he has an amputation kit exactly <laughs> like know. fucking maybe mine. <laughs> like, maybe his case also said property of Ian Holm in it, just like mine. <laughs> yeah, p- perhaps he has a, a British accent and played Bilbo Baggins at one point. <laughs> Baggins. <laughs> But for all the all the shit talk I do about Johnny Depp's quote unquote acting in this time of his career, like he does have like this look to him of like those it's those eyes, right? Mm. Like his eyes are just like pools of melancholy. Sure. Like he really gets across like the despair of this time and this character and he got by for so long on just his eyes. Like mm-hmm. he's he's not a great actor i would say until he gets to pirates where he can really live in that role but like yeah. oh, I, I don't know i i think there are moments there's times where he would really connect with a piece of material like and it would usually be when he worked with tim burton like eh. it's easy to like dismiss that work now i guess edward scissorhands well and i think i think he's unbelievable in ed wood but yeah that's definitely that's like a cartoon performance but i guess 90s like late 90s dead and- man i mean he, he did some good stuff with jim jarmusch but eh. yeah like i i agree like by by and large, I think we started to really see his bag of tricks run out yeah. <laughs> shortly after this. Yeah. I don't know. I I wanted so much more from his character in this movie. To this day, I'm baffled by his Academy Award nomination for Sweeney Todd. Like, yeah, that I was just a, don't fucking get it. Choices were made. That was a weird year. <laughs> the gag of the footstep jutting out of the carriage with the sound foley of like a sharpened knife. Mm-hmm. It never not got a laugh out of me. It mm-hmm. made me giggle every time. His murder stairs with knives at the end of the stairs. They do it like six times. And one time it happens while he's walking towards the carriage, mm-hmm. which means that it's automatic yep yep (laughs) it's fucking great i did love the performance from the actress playing annie after Anne after she's been uh lobotomized like i think that sequence is really well done yeah Yeah. joanna page i just i think that's such a haunting sequence where she's she's talking about her daughter like alice is laughing to me he's a prince and i'm a queen and it just sounds like raving yeah it's a hint towards what we learn later i mean it's it's a continuation of like the the salem witch trials like just accuse somebody of something and then you can just have free reign to do whatever you want you can literally stab them in the brain yeah just because oh they were quote unquote violent and acting out and now they're calm Mm -hmm. well yeah they're calm because you took a chunk of their brain Mm -hmm. i don't know the kill here with the throat slit yeah this is like the first real graphics because i mean all the other killings are kind of like how we did in psycho like we're just close up you know we don't really see knives go in that much but like this throat slit this practical effect is pretty fucking good this is the maybe the most giallo shot in the movie where her eyes are lit up by the reflection of the knife in the puddle which i I think is really fantastic yeah yeah liz is an interesting (laughs) character (laughs) Uh because she gets really mad at the gal 
pals because they won't let her bring a girlfriend over. A girlfriend who also is not very much into her. Like, it's well, a, it's weird to throw a predatory lesbian into the middle of the story. That's what my, I think it's it's more that than, oh, she's just bringing a girlfriend. Because she, she's, like, putting her tongue down anyone's throat who is nearby. Yeah. And, like, the girl's like, can you, this can is, you like, not? 1888. Can you tone that shit the fuck down right. before we all get killed? Right. <laughs> weird wrinkle to throw into the, the storyline. Yeah. This is also around where, like, Aberlene goes back to talk to Ian Holm again. Yeah. And and he's like, I think Prince Albert did it. And he's like, no, it's not Albert. It's yeah, like- he's like, I got him in a can, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where we get introduced to the whole plot about the Freemasons. Uh-huh. And I have tried reading up about the Freemasons like four different times, and I just do not understand it. Oh, you're going to be on a list? <laughs> Molly, can you please explain to me? Because I assume you know about all of this stuff. What What is the de- What is their deal? What is the deal with the Freemasons? <laughs> yeah, well, I need to know. What is the deal? What is the deal? Can you please explain to me the Freemasons? Like, know, it's just that typical, like, secret society fucking, they secretly rule the world bullshit. But they're just way more transparent about it? Like, I, how is this any different than, like, the Illuminati or whatever? Like, is it just- Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay. That makes sense then. Is it like the KKK where, like, oh, they're, they're doing some great stuff behind the scenes, but really they're just doing dumb handshakes? What? Like, <laughs> that's all they're really doing? No, it's it's a lot of, like, it's a lot of rich men looking out for each other. Yeah, that's that's about, essentially okay. what it okay. is. That makes yeah. sense. No, there was the whole thing about the KKK. It was like, I forgot, there was a book of somebody who infiltrated it thinking, like, he was going to learn all these great secrets about, like, their plans and stuff. Yeah. They just do dumb handshakes. Yeah, like, yeah. that's all I do. They're just jerking off in a circle like the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> they're playing this game called Limp Biscuit. <laughs> so yeah, the, uh, Johnny Depp's visions. He's, he's having visions about these these uh, ladies of the night being murdered. Mm-hmm. This again is some of the good filmmaking stuff. It, it's almost filmed like a, an exploitation movie. Yeah, like a grindhouse kind of flick to it. It looks like you're seeing something you're not supposed to see. Yeah. Which I, I think yeah. is great. Yeah, it's the only real time that in the killings is when they actually put any flair into this movie, and yeah. then the rest is like meat and potatoes filmmaking stuff. The one part where Depp like comes to life for me is when he gets to. Catherine's murder and one guy is just like see it's your fault the Ripper killed two people tonight mm-hmm. and he goes get out of my fucking way cunt yeah. <laughs> I do I do laugh. love the little cunt under his breath it made me laugh so hard yeah he says cunt twice in his movie that one was a, that one was a good one it's all about the little cunt <laughs> it's all well, it, oh, my little cunt <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's my favorite line that Bob Odenkirk says in that movie. And go back. He really says it. <laughs> he does. But I was also <laughs> laughing because they have to find a way to fit a Shakespeare quote into every single scene with Robbie mm-hmm. Coltrane. Mm-hmm. And when they're writing here together and he's like putting together that like the the king's special branch is in ch- or the queen's like, the, you know, the basically the special branch of the, the police department is helping to make this cover up happen. Yeah. He says, you're just like Othello. Everything's a suspicion, and yeah. I was like, "That's that's like part of Othello." Like, that's part, like I guess you guys skimmed that before you wrote the screenplay. Mm-hmm. We're stretching it a bit. Uh-huh. We're stretching it a bit. Like they find the anti-Semitic message like scrawled on the wall in blood, and Godley's response is like, uh, "It's not Shakespeare." Like, yeah. like, fucking get it. You're a Shakespeare guy. And this is where um, the the French prostitute, who is like the quote unquote side piece of the uh, what's the, what's the girl the, the the lady's name Liz Liz's girlfriend. Mm. Liz goes out because she's like, I'm going to get fucking hammered tonight. Nothing's going to stop me. Right. And then she gets killed. And the French girl and Heather Graham are there and they're just hanging out like, look, we'll just spend the night and, you know, we'll figure this out tomorrow or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's weird because they all like as soon as one of them is like, I'm going out by myself. I just assume they're going to die. Yeah. Like if I'm Heather Graham, I'm like, well, she's dead. Right. And so they, they're sleeping there in this little inn in like this bedroom. And Johnny Depp has this vision <laughs> of Heather Graham or at least who he thinks is Heather Graham's body just fucking mutilated in this Skinned. bed. Yeah. I wrote down he's taken off the case, but they can't take away his God-given right to look at crime scene photos and get high. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. He, he's a renegade cop that doesn't play by the rules. <laughs> yep. But he decides to to go and check out the crime scene. By the time he gets there, it's too late. Mm-hmm. They're fucking butchered. And he goes to Ian Holm. And, well, at the crime scene, he, he notices uh, brunette hair. Mm-hmm. And Heather Graham has red hair. And he doesn't tell anybody. So this is not Heather Graham's body. Well, I like how the dude is like... Inspector, do you notice something? Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, no. It's like, you are clearly mm-hmm. staring directly at this hair. Yeah. Right. You 
obviously have noticed something. He yeah. says that and then he gets up and leaves. Yeah. Like he's just like, I guess I'm done. He leaves, doesn't say anything. And then uh the, the I guess the front desk clerk says, Oh, there's a letter that was left for you. And it's Heather Graham saying, uh, I got out of the country basically, mm-hmm. and I've got Alice with me, the little baby that was uh the heir to the throne, apparently. And Depp's like, Well, I'm not going to respond to her because that puts her life in danger. So I'm going to just go to Ian Holm. And what is the impetus for him going there? To be like, ah, I give up. I don't fucking know. Tell me who it is. No, he, <laughs> he like, has a vision where he literally sees Ian Holm is Jack the Ripper. Was that it? I, I, I couldn't tell from all the choppy editing. It's the same vision where he has, he sees a bunch of grapes pulsing like testicles. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I, now that you mention it. Wait, you? I think we, we talked about this out of order because all the... That all happens afterwards. Does it? it? You might be right. But I remember he goes to Ian Holm and then Ian Holm basically just confesses to being Jack the Ripper. Ian Holm turns around and his eyes are pitch black like Judge Doom. Yeah. Roger <laughs> Rabbit, like. mm-hmm. And then he says, uh, you know, one day man will say I gave birth to the 20th century. Johnny Depp reaches for a gun in his pocket. And he says, you're not going to live to see the 20th century. Hard. It's a hard line. Great line. It's, it's kind of the best moment in the movie. Hard. Great line. But then Kidney, this guy that's kind of been like the the red herring throughout the movie. Right. He gets the drop on Johnny Depp, but he gets the drop on him by like just stepping in the frame and smacking him in the head. I'm yep. like, how did... How did he not see... You know what? It's like one of those first kills in Halloween 2 when Michael Myers just kind of leaps out of frame and stabs (laughs) that girl on the side of the head. Like, how'd you not see him? Yeah. But uh, yeah, he bashes him on the head and then he's like, oh, we're going to take you to get lobotomized now, buddy. And um, there's a tussle in the carriage on the the ride over. And then I do love seeing Kidney's face smack around the carriage wheel. That is (laughs) a wild stunt. Yeah, that that really got me. Great stunt. You're right, though. Yeah, this is where he goes to, to visit it Mary mm-hmm. and kills Ada instead. And yeah. I, I, I am glad we get one scene where Ian Holm is like fully in view. Like yeah. his mannerisms are really interesting, like sort of robotic. And there's some really cool like side projection stuff here yeah. where they, he's like imagining teaching a class as he does his work. Yeah. Like he's at the operating theater. Yeah. Really, really cool. Yeah. No, I just, I kept waiting for Ian Holm to go a little Bill Bowie in that little moment, but <laughs> yeah. he never does. Yeah. He, he's, he's kind of restrained, like surprisingly. And after he does all of this, we cut to the queen basically saying, Hey, what the fuck guys? Yeah. Like, why are we letting Jack the Ripper do this? <laughs> oh, we, we should have mentioned too, throughout the movie, Johnny Depp falls for Heather Graham. He takes her, to like a museum to like see some fine art and stuff and then she recognizes Albert in one of the paintings yeah. as the guy that fathered so this is where they kind of put it all together then he says I also have a Prince Albert <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Nathan's really putting his own life into this episode. <laughs> when uh, they find the dead French woman in the room and they all think it's Heather Graham, he he's kind of realized that everyone is in on this. Like mm-hmm. the, the police inspector is like covering up things too. And then so when he says the the intro I had, which is I'll bring all you fucking cunts down. Yeah. Like it's a pretty it's a pretty good moment. Like, he actually does some acting for once. It's pretty great. Acting. <laughs> he yanks the ring off of the police captain and chucks it down. Yep, yep. Have you guys seen that? clip of Al Pacino pretending to choke at his birthday party and no. then going acting. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I need to now. <laughs> I'll send it to you. Hell it was, yeah. It's the weirdest thing because it was on Deep Roy's TikTok account so yeah. like that implies that Al Pacino hangs out with Deep Roy. <laughs> I, I guess so, yeah. Yeah. Al Pacino is just living his best life these <sighs> days. Yeah, he's eight years old and having children <laughs> so <laughs> having the best time. <laughs> No problems with that at all. Mm-mm. So, Mally, this is the end of the movie. Uh, you know, they lobotomize Jack the Ripper to, like, cover up. He's, like, the last remaining witness they got to get rid of. I do like the bit with him when they're, like, the Freemasons are, like, judging him. Mm-hmm. And he's, like, no man can, like, no one here is worthy of judging me. Yeah, that's great. Like, Ian Holmes just fucking going for it. He rules. He has that line where he basically is just like, you don't understand what it means to be a Freemason. Yeah. And I was like, same. Yeah, <laughs> I don't either. I don't know. <laughs> But uh, yeah, he's he's defiant to the end. He's like, I don't want to apologize for shit. Mm. It's very eyes wide shutty, Absolutely. like how they kind of deal with the Freemasons in this movie. A little bit. Not nearly as interesting, but... Uh, and we get to see in Holmes' little titties. <laughs> we do see his little titties. <laughs> he likes having his little titties. 
God, what the fuck is happening? We see him laying naked on the floor like me after I've had too much sushi. Like <laughs> That's not an image I needed, Nathan. Or like that guy that jumped into the tank at the Bass Pro Shop. And- <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> like, I didn't need to see, like, I couldn't believe that video when it came out. And I was like, you couldn't chub up a little bit before you jumped in the water. Dude, if you're a grower, you don't want to be skinny dipping in public. I'm just telling you, you can't do that. Can't do it. But yeah, Mally, do you want to tell us what happens here at the end of the movie? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so Johnny Depp goes into the tank of the Bass Pro Shop. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a better ending. So yeah, Jack the Ripper gets lobotomized and, you know, the British monarchy gets away with covering up their secrets. The Freemasons go on. A real Prince Diana move here, just covering it up. Jesus. <laughs> um, so Averline gets the letter from Mary where she's like, I got away. I have the girl. We're safe. Come get us. And he's like, ha, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just go, sir. He's like, as soon as I leave, they're going to know that she's still alive. Yeah. yeah. It's like, if I change my routine or anything like that, they won't, it won't stop until. Yeah. So he burns her letter because he's like, I, you know, I'll never be able to actually have like a life with her, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. And then we just cut to fucking Hagrid just Finding him dead of an opium overdose. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like uh, presumably years later, I, ass- I would assume, right? Because yeah. like we see Heather Graham out in the countryside with baby Alice, and now she's like a, a little girl. Yeah, a little cabin by the sea. Yeah, Heather Graham with the wiggiest wig I've ever seen. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Yeah. And that's kind of a reference to the original ending of the graphic novel because yes. the end of the graphic novel is like kind of a vision of Jack the Ripper that as like he's dying mm-hmm. where he basically has a glimpse of like all the like 21st century London and all this shit. Mm-hmm. And then the last thing he sees is a redheaded woman living in a cottage by the sea raising five little girls who are all named after the five dead women. Mm. And she like this woman apparently can see him. Yeah. Oh. And she says something like, go back to hell where you belong, and then he dies. Wow, that's pretty cool. It rules. Yeah. It's also heavily implied that, like, his spirit inspired several other serial killers. Like, like Jeffrey Dahmer mm. and Ted Bundy and that kind of shit. It's a great fucking book. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wild. All right. But yeah, and then Coltrane, you know, pops the two coins over Abilene's eyes mm-hmm. and- Calls him a sweet, oh my God. sweet cheese. Oh, yeah. Calls him his good time boy. <laughs> the best final line maybe of a movie ever. Good night, sweet prince. Yeah, because we had <laughs> to get a- one more Hamlet quote in there. Yep. Without a hint of irony. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. I thought it was a great way to end this movie. Robbie Coltrane, honestly, giving maybe the best performance of the movie mm-hmm. when he's like holding back tears and has to say that line. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. I guess it's a callback to earlier in the movie. They put uh, some coins on. Um, I can't remember who it was, but they put some coins on some eyes and they explain it. Well, and it, it, what's it, what I love is that Aberlein has overdosed and he's got the coins in his hand, yeah. which tells us that he intended to do that. Yeah. yeah. To, to keep Mary safe. Yeah. I did notice, I did uh, read that there were a couple of different alternate endings that were filmed. Oh, right. here we go. In one of them, he goes to the Far East and then overdoses there in an opium den. Okay. Sure. And then apparently they did film an ending where he changed his mind, fakes his death, and goes off to live with Mary. Yeah, I like it. I think this is a good ending. I think this... Uh you know, there's often times where like, oh, I, we can't be together because it'll, you know, they'll find us and they find some way to like get the two together. But Justify I do, it. Yeah, yeah. I do like this of like, no, he stuck to his fucking guns mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, he, he continued living out his life the way he was doing it before the movie. Like it almost kind of comes full circle for his character. Like yeah. when we first get introduced to him, he's in this opium den and just getting fucking faded. <laughs> and that that's pretty much how he ends the movie. Just getting a little too faded. Yeah. So. That's from hell. So basically, Heather Graham and little baby Alice are going to live okay, safe, away from uh, the monarchy coming after them, and Johnny Depp's dead. Mm -hmm. So... There you go. I mean, it is interesting. You know, we talk about this movie coming out in 2001. Even though I didn't too much care for the movie, I do think the endings kind of subverts that formula pretty well Mm -hmm. and was fairly apt in terms of the emotional state we kind of were all in at the time. I mean, this came out a little over a month after 9-11. Right. I almost kind of want to give the movie a plus one star just for that. (laughs) Like, honestly. (laughs) What? Uh, for 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 coming out after 9/11. <laughs> yep, that's why. No, what? just because like it's the way they subvert that ending. Like oh, I, I see about, what like, you're saying. I the way <laughs> that didn't come together for me. Yeah, the way that means- 
I did not know where you were going with that. I was so confused for a second. I'm so sorry. Plus one star for having a great release date. That's, that's what really, I'm going That's truly what I thought you were saying. Oh, man. This has been a long afternoon. Yeah. I thought the movie was pretty mediocre, but I did like, I like the ending. And I, I do too. like the Jack the Ripper killing scenes. I like Ian Holm. I like Robbie Coltrane. I like the vision stuff. And then I didn't care for the rest of it. There's something weirdly cozy about this like late 90s, early 2000s procedural kind of vibe. Right? Yeah. Like I feel, I don't know. There's, there's something about that, that like, I don't know. This movie went down pretty easy. Although I yeah, wasn't totally wild about the screenplay. I, I had a fun time watching it. Yeah. I guess what it is, is like the movies like this of this time, like they weren't that challenging. Mm. Like they were like, hey, you know, they're going to figure it out by the end. Don't right. worry. Like there wasn't ever a hit. Like I never thought, oh, Jack the Ripper's going to get away. I thought by the end of the movie, I don't think. And then like, you know, J- Johnny Depp is is kind of sleepwalking his way through the movie. So yeah. I don't know if cozy would be the word I would describe, but definitely like palatable yeah i guess would be how i'd say it yeah maybe that's maybe that's a better way to say it because it is like i said it is a gross fucking movie in terms <laughs> of like is. just how it feels but uh yeah no it it felt like almost like easy watching yeah. if that makes any sense for a horror movie yeah totally yeah it went down smooth like screwball whiskey oh Jesus. thank you for bringing up our sponsor for this week's episode no i'm not gonna do that <laughs> mally what do you think about this movie recommendations do you have one it's you know throw it on it's a fun t- little time yeah, yeah i think i'm in the same camp you know you want to throw something spooky on an october Pop it in. It's yeah. a good time. I, I, dude, this and uh, Sleepy Hollow are a fun little twofer. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know? I just, I don't know. It just feels, I, at times it feels like art by commission versus like a labor of love, you know? Like, sure. It's got interesting editing and camera work at times, but then other times just like, I don't know, paint by numbers. Hmm. I mean, that's perfectly apt of what movies were like in the early odds, sure. especially thrillers. So. It's like Law and Order London. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I guess uh, around the horn, it's kind of like thumbs up, but kind of creaky. Yeah. <laughs> like, if that makes any sense. You know what? My recommendation is the same as why I put it on the list. Mm. Why not? You yeah. know what? I, I actually kind of agree with that. Why yeah. not? I think that is that is apt. Yeah. Well, why don't we jump over to everyone's favorite segment, Prop Cop. Ba-na-na-na. And uh, if you're new to the show, Prop Cop is where we look at all the props in the movie From Hell, and we each pick one for ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mally, you get to do us the honor since this is your movie. What is the first prop we're going to take? Oh, the Ripper's knife set. Yeah, that portable amputation kit that he's got. It's pretty cool. Ooh, you boy would be doing some work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you guys notice, and maybe, I don't want to step on your toes if this is yours, Nathan, but mm. there's a, a montage of like uh, these goofy-ass paintings <laughs> that's on the wall. <laughs> yeah. And um, fuck, whose who's home was it? I can't even remember now. It's the, it's Ian Holmes' place. That's mm-hmm. what I thought, when, when okay. The, when the Ripper's having dinner, it shows, like, literally surgical paintings as yeah. though we're not supposed to be like, oh, it's probably a surgeon, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, what did you want, Nathan? Oh, I want the chalkboard with the knife drawing on it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's pretty great. Oh, we didn't even talk about, too, one of the, the pimps that comes after one of the ladies mm-hmm. has a retractable Assassin's Creed blade in his sleeve. Oh, yeah. For- <laughs> yeah. What my holding? Yeah, what he's like, what do, you, what do you got out there? And the blade retracts. He's like, what are you talking about? I got nothing. I got nothing. <laughs> it's me, Ezio. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want uh, whatever that mask was that they used to lobotomize oh. the woman at the beginning. Yeah, sure. Like the retro method of like pouring, I guess it was opium or something, but like pouring it over the mask because <sighs> I have trouble sleeping. Oh, yeah, the laudanum. Yeah, yeah. so I need, I need a way to go to sleep. That looked like it knocked her out real quick. So God, I'd Jesus. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I want to try that prime rib I, that the killer's eating. I am good. I'm good. I am great. It looked juicy. I'm ah. really good. I don't need that. <laughs> I'll give it a bite. Let me find out. <laughs> I give it the old college bite. <laughs> well, speaking of bites, why don't we talk about bits, bit parts? Oh wow. You like that? That's wow. good. Who, uh, who should we play in the movie? Preferably non-named smaller characters. Yeah. Nathan, who do you want to be? At the end, when Robbie Coltrane goes into the opium den, he literally pushes a dude out of the way who's like <laughs> hanging from the rafters by an arm. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Made me laugh really hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to be that guy. Uh, Mally? Honestly, I feel like there's one scene that all three of us would just have to be in oh Oh boy here we go and it's at the end when aberlene's like walking through the street reading her letter Mm -hmm. he walks by this like this staircase and there's just like a bunch of dudes passed out on the stairs (laughs) oh yeah (laughs) i feel like the three of us just gotta be back there i'm into that just drunk and passed out (laughs) there's also a dude like an hour into the movie who's sitting in the fog and he's just wigging out like he's (laughs) i remember that yeah yeah yeah. Yeah. i want to be uh the cameraman for the paper that always seems to catch everyone off guard when he takes a photo 
photo of the crime scene. <laughs> oh, sure. Like, it happens more than once. Like, his camera isn't, like, four feet by four feet. <laughs> right. Well, like, he takes a picture, and then everyone stops and stares like they've, they've never seen a camera before. <laughs> Burn the witch! <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, much like the coins that are in uh, Johnny Depp's hands are at the end, we've got some silver to talk about as well. Boy, so why don't we talk about the silver linings from hell? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, who wants to go first? Any any takers? Any volunteers? I think Aberlene is at peace at the end, even though he has to take his own life to keep her safe. Like, he knows that she's safe. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Mally? For better or for worse, the British monarchy and the Freemasons have persisted to this day. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably say for worse, but I hear well, you. I smell what you're putting down. Ew. <laughs> Mine was that uh, Jack the Ripper never fully succeeded in his plan and he was taken out before he could. Yeah. So, Heather Graham's still alive, the baby's still alive. How great would it be if that baby did, like the sequel, if she does go after the throne? She's like, it's my right. <laughs> I'm the heir to the throne. I am no man. Yeah. Oh, she can play her too. Oh, that'd be great. All right. Well, let's say at the end of From Hell, you are upset that Johnny Depp is dead in the bathtub <laughs> or wherever he was, and uh, you need a pick me up. You need a double pairing. What What was the the cool down? Is that what we called yeah. it earlier. Yeah, the, the, the cool down. <laughs> What's the movie people can put on after they put on From Hell to uh, bring their spirits back up? Robbie Coltrane keeps quoting Shakespeare through this movie, mm-hmm. and it kept reminding me that recently I rewatched Baz Luhrmann's Romeo plus Juliet and mm-hmm. had a yeah. grand old time with it. So I would throw that one in. That movie is fucking crazy. Okay. One of my favorite bits, when he's like, hand me my long sword, <laughs> grabs a shotgun. <laughs> a shotgun that says sword yeah. on it. Yes. Yeah. And killer soundtrack. Yeah. Great soundtrack. Butthole surfers. Yeah. Radiohead. Mally? I'm going to go 2009 Sherlock Holmes. That's so good So fun, right? Yeah. 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 So fun. I thought about recommending Sweeney Todd since it is another period piece of Johnny Depp in England, but that movie uh, may qualify for the show. It in so, fact does. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you say that like I haven't recommended films that would qualify That's for true. this fucking show. That's true. Uh, I'm going to go with another period piece movie where women can have occupations other than Ladies of the Night. Mm. And actually, I did not think that we would somehow reference it in our episode, but we did. I'm going to go with Greta Gerwig's Little Women. Yeah. Nice. That's the title they settled on versus the other one we talked about earlier. Um, <laughs> oh, yep. Little C words. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, yeah. I, I just watched it for the like all the way through for the first time recently, and it's good. It's great. It's great. It's great. Well, we haven't done this in quite some time, but fellas this is a horror movie Mm -hmm. why don't we talk about best kill oh sure any uh any takers i would say it has to go with uh with liz like that that throat slit is an impressive visual effect the stuff they do with lighting in that sequence is really cool oh i forgot to mention the the ripper's carriage also has these green lamps like the lanterns on the sides that look like absinthe almost yeah it's, it's a it's a great little touch and also that fucking like retractable step that could cut a motherfucker's leg off <laughs> i love that dude the sound effect when it c- is like a sword unsheathing i know I love it. it's, it's like, so Shing! fucking funny and they do it like six times i thought it was so good it's so good but also i, I guess we didn't talk about it the reason it, it makes sense the reason he slashes their throats first mm. is so they can't scream out for help right. while he mutilates them in other ways mm-hmm. so ugh. I think the the Blech. French yeah the the French prostitute I think was gruesome fucking death oh Ada yeah those actual like photos are fucked yep. yeah it's a nightmare like just the or like the fucking intestine hanging around like Christmas garland and shit Blech. yeah. What'd you pick? I'm going to go, my worst kill is not actually a kill. Mm. It is the lobotomies. Yeah. Because I think that is a fate worse than death. I well, agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good choice. Yeah. As the great Tom White said, I'd rather have a <laughs> bottle in front of me than, than a frontal, frontal lobotomy. lobotomy. Yeah, absolutely. God, anytime there's a lobotomy in a movie, I just can't, can't handle it. Can't fucking deal with it. Don't worry. You'll get yours. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm, God. I'm hoping it breaks. <laughs> So that is From Hell from 2001. Mm-hmm. If you want more of our show. <laughs> the year where nothing bad happened. Nothing ever bad happened that year. Well, actually something bad ha- did happen. Uh, James Cameron went down into the ocean and he had a little problems with his robots at the Titanic wreckage. Right. And that was a bad time for him. What? But yeah, uh, if you want more of our show, be sure to tune in next Monday and a few more Mondays after that for this season as we have a couple more episodes to come before we wrap up season seven. If you haven't already, subscribe, rate, leave feedback. And I do want to hammer that home. And it's 2024 podcast. The only way you you make your way through just the piles and piles of other shows Mm -hmm. is by leaving ratings and giving feedback so other people find it. And arguing about AI and CGI on TikTok. Uh, We talked about that (laughs) last week. Uh, (laughs) 
If you haven't already, you can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, and find us over on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash silver linings playlist. Mm-hmm. Well, that's all for From Hell, and next week, Mally, is your pick, and I think you have a clue for us. I cannot confirm whether next week's movie is a movie. <laughs> because it doesn't end, or we don't know if it ends, or what? I cannot confirm whether next week's movie is a movie. Copy that. So, uh, rest in peace, Oatmeal, and uh, I guess, uh, Aberlene. Yeah. I guess. And uh, as always... Penny for a sock. God damn it, that was going to be mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good night, <laughs> sweet princes. Excelsior! 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 Oh. Look it up! We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. In it. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters.